There's one visual novel that has always been suggested to me, but I haven't found the time to play through it. Luckily for me, Jazz USA has delivered a remastered version, and while the writing offers some of the best storytelling, the material might make some readers uncomfortable. I'm Brad Crespo, and this is Noisy Pixel's review of The Song of Saya, written by Lynn Carmelo. The Song of Saya follows the male protagonist, Fuminori, who has lost his parents due to an accident. Barely managing to survive, he develops an unusual illness and starts to see the world in a very different way. During his delusional state, everything around him resembles disgusting meat and blood. But that's not even the half of it. People who used to be his close friends look like unidentifiable monsters, and even their voices sound strange. Fuminori begins to distance himself from everyone, until he meets a strange girl named Saya. Sure, she might not be completely human and might look off to others, but she is the only living thing who looks like a human figure to Fuminori, and therefore, she became his living purpose. One thing I immediately noticed is that I felt extremely uncomfortable while reading. Although the images are not scary, the writing will make anyone shudder by its detailed and creepy descriptions. I began to imagine how the grotesque things in the story looked like even without actually seeing images of it, which made for a rather creepy experience. The story keeps a serious tone throughout its entire runtime. Given that this is technically a romance, I expect it to read at least something cheerful or happy, but all of the scenes are rather depressing, which left me troubled. I would say The Song of Saya wanted to show its readers how much some people are ready to sacrifice for romance. Everything else, besides Fuminori and Saya, didn't seem to matter at all. And I have to admit, although it didn't seem like it at first, their love for each other was very sweet. Just a little unusual. Although The Song of Saya is a short game, I couldn't finish it in one go, and had to take several breaks in order to be able to calm myself down and digest the events. I never believed a game could make me feel this way, and it became a love-hate relationship because of it. On one hand, I was extremely scared to go on, but on the other, I had to know what will happen further in the game. There is also the mystery of who or what Saya is that plays out throughout the game's multiple endings. Although whether that question is answered might depend on who is reading it. There are plenty of beautiful and creepy CGs that are well drawn, and if I had to pick the most gorgeous one, I would pick every single one of them. Graphically, while genitals are not visible, you will see half-naked women in very uncomfortable situations. I was also impressed that Fuminori has his own sprite and is also voiced. If I have to describe the Song of Saya with a single word, it would be either disturbing or uncomfortable. And this visual novel will surely make you feel one way or the other throughout most of its story. I have to say that this is by no means meant for weak-minded readers. Even though romance is the story's focus, it might not be the typical love story you expect. However, I suppose this couple is sort of adorable in their own way. I never knew a game could bother me so much, and it's crazy when I think about how much the story is writing was able to affect me. What also makes this visual novel special is its excellent presentation with its gorgeous artwork, and also the voiceover and soundtrack completely complement this interesting and unique experience. Noise Pixel is giving The Song of Saya an 8.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. You can read our full review at noisepixel.net. Noise Pixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all of our future content.